Hello, everybody. In today's lesson, we're going to continue with module 10, lesson 10.2, evaluating expressions. We're on page 271 of the sixth grade Go Math textbook. Um, and so let's look at the essential question. How can you use the order of operations to evaluate algebraic expressions? Well, recall that an algebraic expression contains one or more variables, <clears throat> and we can substitute a number for each variable and then find the value of the expression. When you do that, this is the, the that process is called evaluating the expression. For example, to evaluate the product of 2 and m for m equals 5, we would substitute 5 for m. Now, that doesn't turn that into 25. Remember, this means 2 times m. So <clears throat> sometimes you'll see it written in parentheses when you substitute. This is just a reminder that it's multiplication. You can also write the time sign in between, or you can write it with a dot, a multiplication symbol, okay? So two times five is 10. So when M is five, this expression is 10. All right, so let's look at some examples. <clears throat> Evaluate each expression for the given value of the variable. So we have the expression X minus nine, and they want us to evaluate the expression when X equals 15. Substitute 15 for x, and 15 take away 9 gives us 6. So when x equals 15, x minus 9 is 6. Here we have 16 divided by n, and they want you to evaluate when n equals 8. So substitute 8 for n, and we have 16 divided by 8, which is 2. So when n equals 8, 16 divided by n is 2. <clears throat> See, we have 5 tenths times y, and you need to evaluate when y equals 1 and 4 tenths. So substitute 1 and 4 tenths for y and multiply that by 5 tenths, and we would get 7 tenths. And so again, when y equals 1 and 4 tenths, 5 tenths <clears throat> times y is 7 tenths. In our last example, 6 times k when k equals 1 third. So we're going to substitute 1 third for k. And we're going to go 6 times 1 third. So 1 third of 6 is 2. So when k equals 1 third, 6 times k is 2. All right, so now we're going to go to 272, and we're going to practice some on our own. So we have <clears throat> evaluate each expression for the given value of the variable. So we have three times, sorry. I was seeing the other page for a second there. All right, so number one, we have four times x, and we need to evaluate for when x equals eight. So step one, we're going to substitute eight for x. So 4 times 8. Okay. And what is 4 times 8 equal? 32. <clears throat> 6 and a half minus n, evaluate when n equals 1.8. Substitute 1.8 for n. And what does that equal? 6.5 minus 1.8 should come up with 4 and 7 tenths. And number 3, evaluate m divided by 6 when m is 18. Substitute 18 for m. <clears throat> and 18 divided by 6 is 3. Right? Simple as that. All right, so using the order of operations. So sometimes algebraic expressions may have more than one operation or more than one variable. So to evaluate these expressions, we're going to substitute the given value for each variable, just like we practiced just in numbers 1, 2, and 3. And then we have to follow the order of operations. So <clears throat> evaluate each expression for the given value of the variable. We have 4 
times the difference of x and 4. And they want you to evaluate it for when x equals 7. So step 1, substitute 7 for the x. So now we're going to rewrite it as 4 times the difference of 7 and 4. We have to subtract what's inside the parentheses first, right? And just a real quick review, <clears throat> you might be familiar with the phrase PEMDAS, okay? So parentheses are first, right? Followed by exponents, followed by multiplication or division left to right. Again, if we only have multiplication or division, we just go left to right. And then we're going to end with addition or subtraction, and again, left to right. Okay? So for our last two things, are addition or subtraction, we're just going to go left to right. All right, so we substitute 7 for 4. Parentheses is first, so 7 take away 4 is 3. And that leaves us 4 times what's inside the parentheses, 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. So when x equals 7, 4 times the difference of x and 4 is 12. So evaluate for 4 times x minus 4 when x equals 7. All right, so substitute 7 for x, and we have 4 times 7 minus 4. All right, well, multiplication comes before subtraction, so we're going to multiply. 7 times 4 is 28 minus 4. Now subtract, and we get 24. So when x equals 7, 4 times x minus 4 is 24. <clears throat> All right, and c w minus x plus w. So they tell us that w is 6, x is 5, and y is 3. So we have 6 minus 5 plus 3 because we substituted the value of the variables into our expression. So I have subtraction and addition. Well, we're supposed to do addition or subtraction left to write. So that's all I have here is addition, uh, subtraction and addition. So I'm just going to go left to right. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to add first. I'm just going to go left to right because it says, or, okay. I don't have to do addition first. Okay. And when you only have addition and subtraction left as operations, you have to go left to right. All right. So six take away five is one. And we haven't added the 3 yet, so 1 plus 3 is our last step, and 1 plus 3 is 4. <clears throat> and our final example, we have x squared, or x to the second power, minus x, when x equals 9. So substitute 9 for the x's, and we get 9 squared minus 9. Well, we do exponents first in this problem, and 9 times 9 is 81. And then we have 81 minus 9. So now we just subtract. And we get 72. So when x equals 9, x squared minus x is 72. All right. So let's go ahead and practice and solve some problems. So number 4. We have 3 times the product of n plus 1. And they're telling us that n equals 5. Okay, so we're going to substitute 5 for n. And so now we have 3 times the sum of 5 and 1. Parentheses have to come first. So we have 3 times 6. Well, now we only have one operation left, so 18. <clears throat> Okay, number five, four times the difference of n and four plus 14. Okay, substitute five for n, 
all of these all of these problems four through six are n is five so four times the difference of five and four plus 14. okay order of operations we have multiplication parentheses and addition parentheses comes first So 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, now we have multiplication and addition. Multiplication comes first. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 14. Now we only have one operation, so 18. And 6. We have 6 times n plus n squared. And again, n is 5. So substitute 5 for n. So we have multiplication, addition, and exponents. Exponents are first. So rewrite everything else. Okay. 5 squared is 25. Now we have multiplication and addition. Multiplication comes first. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 25. 30 plus 25 is 55. Okay, evaluate each expression for a equals 3, b equals 4, and c equals 6. So 7. Since the a and the b are touching each other, that means multiplication. So a times b minus c. So substitute 3 for a, 4 for b, and 6 for c. Okay. So I went ahead and put the dot in there so I know that it's multiplication. This is not 34. Okay, If I put 3 and 4 here, that does not mean it's 34. This means A times B. So 3 times 4 minus 6. Multiplication comes first. And we're left with 12 minus 6. Okay. 12 minus 6 is 6. Number 8. B times C plus 5 times A. All right. B again is 4, so substitute 4 for B. C is 6, so substitute 6 for C. Plus 5 times A. And A is 3. All right, so we have multiplication, addition, multiplication. So we need to multiply first. So 6 times 4, 24, plus 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Now we just add, and we get 39. Okay, number 9, <clears throat> we have a cubed minus the sum of b and c. Okay, a was 3. So substitute 3 for the A. Substitute 4 for B and 6 for C. So we have 3 cubed minus the sum of 6 and 4. All right, so we have exponents, subtraction, parentheses. So we have to do what's inside parentheses first. So we have 3 to the third minus 10. Now exponents are next. 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27, minus 10. So we get 17. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Evaluating real-world expressions. So you can evaluate algebraic expressions to solve real-world problems. So example three, a scientist measures the air temperature in Death Valley, California and records 50 degrees Celsius. The expression 1 and 8 temps times Celsius plus 32 gives the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit for a given temperature in degrees Celsius or C. So find the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit that is equivalent to 50 degrees Celsius. 
So find the value of C. Well, C, Celsius, is 50 degrees Celsius. So substitute that value into the expression. So our expression, again, was 1 and 8 temps times C plus 32. So 1 and 8 temps times 50 plus 32. We have multiplication and addition. Multiply first, we get 90 plus 32. So 50 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so number 10. The expression 6x squared gives the surface area of a cube. And the expression x to the third gives the volume of a cube where x is the length of one side of the cube. Find the surface area and the volume of a cube with a side length of two meters. So <clears throat> the surface area equals some number, some meters squared, and the volume is some meters cubed. So we're going to use S equals 6x squared. And they're telling us the length is 2 meters. So we're going to have 6 times 2 squared. All right, so we have exponents and multiplication. Do the exponents four first. So 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And now we're left with 6. So 6 times 4 is 24. So we have 24 meters squared for the surface area. And now the volume is x cubed. Okay, well x is 2. So 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2 or 8. So 8 meters cubed. All right, and 11. 60m, or 60 times m, gives the number of seconds in m minutes, right? There's 60 seconds in a minute. How many seconds are there in 7 minutes? All right, well, we have 60m, and m equals 7. So 60 times 7. Well, 7 times 6 tens is 42 tens, or 420. Okay. All right, let's go on to page 274. All right, <clears throat> so guided practice, and then we'll um, take a break and then go to um, independent practice after that. So 274, number one, X, that helps you guys see it, right? X minus seven when X is 23. All right, we'll substitute 23 for x. And we have 27 minus 3. So that's 16. Okay, number 2. 3 times a minus b. Substitute 4 for a, 6 for b. So we have 3 times 4 minus 6. Multiplication and subtraction. Multiply first. So we're going to get 12. 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 6 equals 6. Okay, 3. 1 half W plus 2. So we have to take 1 half of 1 ninth and add 2 more to it. So we're substituting 1 ninth for w, so that means multiply. So 1 half times 1 ninth is 1 eighteenth plus 2, so we get 2 and 1 eighteenth. Five, 4. 5 times the sum of 6 and 2 tenths plus z, when z is 3 and 8 tenths. So substitute 3 and 8 tenths for z. Okay. 
So now we have five times the sum of six and two tenths plus three and eight tenths. So we have parentheses and multiplication basically. Okay, we have addition inside the parentheses, so that's what we're going to do first. And six plus three is nine, two tenths plus eight tenths is one, so ten. So five times ten gives us an answer of fifty. All right, number five. <clears throat> 8 divided by t plus t squared. So substitute 4 for the t's. So you're going to have 8 over 4, or 8 fourths, plus 4 squared. Okay, so we have division, addition, exponents. We're going to do the exponents first. So I'm going to rewrite 8 fourths and the addition, and 4 squared is 16. Okay, now I have division and addition, so I'm going to divide first. 8 divided by 4 is 2, plus 16 gives me 18. And number 6, 5m minus m squared when m equals 3. So substitute 3 for the m's. So now I have 5 times 3 minus 3 squared. Okay, I have multiplication, subtraction, exponents. Exponents come first. So we have 5 times 3 minus 9. 3 squared is 3 times 3, so 9. Now we have multiplication and subtraction. So I'm going to multiply first. 5 times 3 is 15 minus 9. So we get 6. <clears throat> Number 7, the table shows the prices for games in Bella's soccer league. And her parents and grandmother attended a soccer game. How much did they spend if they all went together in one car? So let's see, student tickets are $6, non-student tickets are $12, and parking is $5. Okay, so write an expression that represents the car cost of one car full of non-student soccer fans. Use X as the number of people who rode in the car and attended the game. Okay, so non-student soccer fans. So non-students will pay $12 per ticket. So $12, and we don't know the number of students, or non-students, sorry, so 12 times X will tell us the number of, the cost of the tickets, right, for those non-students. But everybody has to pay five, not everybody, but one car has to pay $5 for parking. So it would be 12 times X plus 5. Okay. Again, the 12 represents the cost of the non-student tickets. The X is the number of non-student soccer fans. And the $5 represents the cost for the parking. All right, so B. <clears throat> Since there are three attendees, evaluate the expression 12 times x plus 5 for x equals 3. All right, so we're going to substitute 3 for x and add 5. So 12 times 3 is 36. 36 plus 5. Well, 36 plus 5 is 41. So it's going to, the family spent $41 to attend the game. All right, number eight. Stan wants to trim around the edge of a rectangular tablecloth that is seven feet long and five feet wide. The perimeter of the tablecloth is twice the length plus twice the width. How much trim does Stan need to buy? All right, so write an expression that represents the perimeter of the rectangular tablecloth. Let L represent the length of the tablecloth and W represent its width. Okay, so it said the perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width. So 2 times L plus 2 times W. Evaluate your expression for L equals 7 and W equals 5. So substitute 7 for L, substitute 5 for W. So we have multiplication, 
addition, multiplication. We have to do multiplication first. 2 times 7, 14. 2 times 5, 10. Okay, now we only have addition left, so 14 plus 10, 24. So she needs to buy 24 feet of trim. And number nine. How do you know the correct order in which to evaluate algebraic expressions? Okay, well, first thing we have to do is substitute for the, for the variables. Okay, and once we substitute the values of the variables, <clears throat> we're just going to follow the order of operations. So again, substitute for the variables. That's what all we've been doing is substitute for the variables. And then we follow the order of operations that we use for any numerical expression. So here, after we substitute the variables, we went multiplication first, and then we added. Okay. So that's it for the guided practice. And so we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be working with the independent practice for Lesson 10-2. So until then, I'll see you soon.